Coach, 16 games in, a lot of close games, a lot of games inside the last few minutes. You feel now with all that experience, it's starting to pay off a little bit. You know, going back to the last couple of games, you've been able to finish. Yeah, it's been it's definitely been good to be on the winning side of, of those games and. Um, anytime you can get those experiences, especially early, uh, it, it's helpful. Uh, going down the latter part of the season, and we continue to improve and continue to grow and learn from from being in those type of situations. It's a quick turnaround tonight, but you know, just going back to you starting to get some guys back, and just some of the challenges for you to try to fit them into the rotation where they weren't there at the beginning of the year, and just where they're going to, you know, distribute the minutes and. We're grateful to get our guys back, and um, you know we're still working, working on Trey and CJ. Uh, and you know, once we do, we'll take a look at where we are and kind of go from there. Um, you played only three games without Zion, and every one you've been missing one other guy, right? So how do you, how different an offense do you run? How different things do you do when you don't have Zion compared to when you do? Understanding that. Three game sample size does miss another player in each of those. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's something that look most teams are going to deal with some type of uh, injury or guys being out or what have you, and you try to build a foundation and a program that is sustainable and guys can come in and compete. Um, they defend, they share the ball, sort of our our bullet points as as an organization. And um, you give you try to give yourself a chance to win those games, but it's definitely some adjustments that you make. Um, rotations are different, and guys just have to be ready, and, and that's what we work on. Just prepara preparation meets opportunity moments. Late in the sack game, you kind of Zion brought up almost every single time. You didn't have to obviously have CJ. It's how do you decide when you have CJ whether you put Zion in kind of the elbow or one of the spots you usually do? whether you play him as kind of the primary ball handler. Yeah, just see what's working. <laughs> if it's working and he's bringing it up and we're able to c generate good looks, we continue to do it. Um, if, if it's working with CJ bringing it up and Zion's more off the ball and B.I., we, we'll do that as well. So it's just a continuation of looking at what works for us. Every game presents different challenges. Teams try to take things away from us, and, and we try to adjust accordingly. Sure. Um, you know, we watch film and we try to look at some of the things that the team does well, what can we take away, how we want to attack them. But the biggest thing for us is knowing our identity and going out each and every game and trying to improve that part. Um, most teams, they want to play the same way. You know, they want to play, they want to rebound the ball, they want to play fast offensively. Uh, so we want to continue to look at our identity and attack each and every game accordingly. And so, you know, it's not a lot of time to go through a whole bunch of Salt Lake or Utah sets. It's more about us. And so that's kind of how our focus on back-to-backs. What is your identity? Compete, defend, share the ball. Why has Utah been such a tough one in the last couple of years? They present a matchup issue for uh, really a, a ton of teams because of their size, Olenek, uh, marketing, they added John Collins. Uh, Clarkson is a, is a scorer, and they're almost positionless. All those guys can bring the ball up the floor. They can handle. They can shoot. Um, their record doesn't indicate it this year, but they're they're a tough matchup, and they're tough. They're usually tough at home. Okay. Thank you.